Uh, greetings in Jesus' name. Um, today's word comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11. I'm going to read up to verse 16. And it says, To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now, instead of waiting un until you die. So his father agreed to divide this wealth between his uh, sons. A few days later, this young son packed all his belongings and took a trip to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About this time, about the, uh, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. The boy became so angry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. This is a very familiar story. Um, the, the story of the prodigal son. Uh, in most cases, this story is used to illustrate repentance uh, based on the time that the boy decided to change his mind and come home. It's also used to illustrate uh, the love of God for sinners and especially those who are lost. But today, I want us to look at a different side of this story. We want to look at uh, the prodigal, even before he left home. How was he? How was he before he left home? And what can we learn uh, about this story uh, before he left home? Now, I've entitled today's message, Understanding the Prodigal. Understanding the Prodigal. Why is it important to understand the prodigal? Number one, because everyone can become prodigal. Everyone can become prodigal. Yes, we are using a son here, the prodigal son, but it, is, it can happen to any gender, both male and female. It can happen to any age, young and old. It can, belong, it can happen to anybody, irrespective of the occupation that they are in. So it can happen to anybody. We can be talking about a prodigal mother, a prodigal father, a prodigal son or a daughter, and it, it can happen to anyone. Number two is that we live with prodigals. If you look around in, every fam in many families, in many neighborhoods, there is one that has fear of the way and has behaved most possibly like this young man. How do we live with these, such people? How do we deal with them? Possibly it's your son, it's your daughter, it's your father, it's your mother, it's your sister, or any other relative. We need to understand these protocols so that we can be able to help them. Number three, we need to know, understand these protocols so that we can know how to deal with them. This protocol may not, may have started developing this character long before he acted on it. Um, there are people who are potential protocols. Understanding them helps one to prevent uh, situations where one can be able to fear how the uh, the way and end up like this prodigal son. So today we are going to look at six characteristics that we find uh, from this prodigal son. Number one is found in verse 12. It says uh, that uh, the younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now instead of waiting until you die. The first point is about impatience. He asked for his inheritance earlier than the time it was expected. There was nothing wrong about this inheritance because eventually this young man was going to get this inheritance. But the problem is about the time that he asked for it. He could not wait 
the, the Bible say, here says, I don't want to wait until you die. Because that was the time when inheritance could be given to the children. But this young man could not wait. He wanted to have it here and now. A culture of impatience. That is one of the weakness of this young man. In life, there are many good things, but they have the, exact, the right time. There is a right time for marriage. There is a right time to go to school. There is a right time to leave home. There is a right time to do many things. But if you do it before the right time, you may end up in great problems. And this young man waited until there was the right time for him to get this inheritance. Possibly he was not going to find himself in such a uh, position, or in such a state. He could not have uh, done it. So brothers and sisters, we need to be patient. Patience is a great value. But today, there are so many people who are lacking patience. They want things here, they want them right away. Most good things in life takes time. To build a career, you need to take time. You cannot be employed today and tomorrow you become the MD. To build a business, it takes time. You cannot start a business today and tomorrow you are enjoying profits. Simple things like even looking for a marriage partner takes time. You just cannot go there and pick one person and go and live with him. It takes time. Shortcuts are always dangerous. There is a saying uh, that goes like that. So, friends, this man had this character of impatience. And as we're going to see in the end of the story, it ended up uh, totally ruining his life. Patience is a great virtue. Number two, this man was selfish. How do we know he was selfish? He was always caring about himself. He never thought about the people around him. Before he left home, I don't know whether he took time to think about how his parents were going to feel while he was away. He didn't take time to think about his brothers, his sisters, his neighbors, how, he was going to, how they were going to feel about his absence. This man was always uh, thinking about himself. He even never considered the others. Prodigals cause more problems, not only to themselves, but to the people around them. People who suffer most are the people around uh, the prodigals. You can imagine sons and daughters of alcoholic parents. They come home drunk and probably sometimes even violent. They have no peace, they, they suffer. You can imagine parents of sons and daughters who have left home, just like this young man. The sleepless nights that they spend thinking about them, worrying about them, hoping that one day they are going to turn uh, and become good children. You can think about spouses of prodigal husbands or prodigal wives, how much pain they go through and suffering they go through trying to accommodate and uh, live with these people. Selfish people think about themselves before you take any action, just like this young man. Think about the people around you. Think about your brothers. Think about your sisters. Think about your spouse. Think about the people around you. How are they going to feel when you are behaving the way you, you are doing? So this prodigal son had this character of selfishness. Number three, this young man, uh, again, did not take advice. We are not told in the story, but it is possible that when he came up with the suggestion of being given his inheritance, the father may have taken time to advise him against such an action. Possibly even their brothers and sisters tried to persuade him to change his mind and take a different uh, direction. But from the look of things, it seems this man did not listen to such advice. He went ahead and took his positions 
and went away. There is something very strange about this young man. The Bible says he went to a far country. He went very far away. Why did he have to go very far? Why not take his possessions and just use them in the neighborhood? Because he did not want to be close to people who cared for him. He went away so that to a place where no one knows him and where no one cared about him. So that even the advice that he would have received, he would not. So he was actually running away from the advice and words of caution that he was going to receive from others. If this man lived today, he could have actually uh, changed his phone number. He could have even blocked his parents and the people that uh, knew him. He could have even um, discarded the number that he's using so that nobody can get in touch with him. What is very dangerous is that when the devil wants to destroy somebody, he first isolates him. He first isolates him from the people who cares about him. So the devil isolated this young man, took him very far away, where no one cared about him. And we see the final result. He ended up in a very desperate and very miserable uh, way. So, brothers and sisters, we need to listen to advice. Do not shut, do not block avenues where people can talk to you, can advise you. The Bible says there is a way that looks nice in the eyes of man, but the end leads you to destruction. So we need to be able to listen uh, to advice. You, cannot, you don't have to invent the wheel. People have gone the road that you are about to travel. <clears throat> they have experiences that they can be useful to guide you. Number four, this young man uh, was very difficult to live with. You may ask yourself, why was this parent very quick to allow him to take his uh, property and leave? Maybe you can look at this father and think that he was not a, garing, a caring father, that he did not actually take the necessary precaution uh, when he was handing over this property to this young man. But there is a possibility that this young man had proved very difficult to live. He had actually, maybe he was too demanding, maybe many times he was drunk and disorderly, maybe he was quarrelsome and sometimes even violent, to the extent that when he requested his, his father to give him his property, the father was very glad to just allow him to live because maybe in his absence, they were going to have more peace. They were going to enjoy even life with, without him. Maybe I need to ask you a question. Which prodigal is better? The one who is at home or the one who has gone away? The one who always brings problem and trouble and is around or the one who is away? At certain times, some people wish that uh, they need to be absent, not to be around. So, this man had proved very difficult to live. Maybe you need to ask yourself, how is your relationship with the people around you? How is the relationship with the people around you? Are you finding it very difficult uh, to cope and to coexist with these people? Has it reached a time when people wouldn't care even when you are there or not there? This man had proved very difficult. And finally, this man was driven by pleasure. The Bible says a few days later, this young son packed all his belongings and took a trip to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money on wild living. The word prodigal actually means somebody who is uh, extravagant, somebody who is wasteful, somebody who is reckless, somebody who does not use his resources uh, broadly, somebody who just uh, uses his money for temporary pleasure. This is what was driving this man. Uh, there is a Swahili uh, statement that says, Funja mfuba kama bado meno iko. I think this was the philosophy that was guiding this man, that when I'm still young and energetic and strong, I need to live to my best. 
he ca he, the philosophy of this man again could be uh, just live for today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. In fact, the Bible here says he went, he, he, he talks about while living, spending money on while living. While living could actually mean possibly drinking, eating, partying, and all that, irrespective of um, the life that was ahead of him. So this man was driven by pleasure. The problem with pl uh, life driven by pleasure is that pleasure cannot be satisfied. The more you have, the more you need. You will always get, want more and more and more. And in fact, it is not even more. Whatever gave you pleasure today, tomorrow you want something higher than that. Another problem about pleasure is that it costs. It is costly. It's expensive. It is money. The fact that we see from this story is that within a short while, the money was spent. So it is costly and it's expensive uh, to do that. So, and this is a characteristic of quick money that just comes uh, uh, quickly like that. Like this young man uh, got this money freely, possibly never worked for it because we see this was an inheritance. We have seen people winning lotteries. They get very huge amount of money just quickly like that. And most of them end up in poverty because they go out, squander the money, and within a short while, they are back to where they are. So this man was driven by pressure. Uh, you've seen even people sell family land and, or family property, and within a short while, uh, they have spent all the money in lifestyles like these ones. So quick money dwindles away very fast. So we've seen uh, the, how this young man behaved. What do we learn from him? Number one, let's watch out for the characteristics of prodigals. This man was impatient, selfish, refusing to lead us to advice, difficult to live with. He was driven by pleasure. Possibly one of these characteristics is in your life. Possibly you are, go, you are, you are becoming impatient. You, there are things you want to have right, uh, right away. Are you tired? Maybe you're living the life that you have been living. Maybe you're tired of your marriage, of your family. I've already mentioned that the, when the devil wants to destroy you, he isolates you. Possibly you are, all, you are almost thinking of quitting. Quitting your uh, marital home. Quitting your home. Running away. Possibly this is a trap that the devil wants to, you to get into. I want you, may you reconsider your position. How quick are you to listen to advice? Are you open to advice? Are you open to uh, people giving you opinions on before you do something? You need to be open to, to people's advice. During these difficult times, the devil wants to take advantage of it. Possibly you are going through luck. Possibly you are going through some challenging situations. The devil may use that as a foothold to take charge of your life and mislead you and lead you in a, in a difficult situation just like this young man. So today, let's learn from this uh, story of the prodigal son. How is your life? I have already mentioned that anybody can become prodigal. I mentioned that we live with these prodigals. I've also already mentioned that um, we can be able, to, we can be of use, or can be of assistance to these people. May God help us. May God be with us, even in such difficult times, so that we may not fall in the trap that this young man fell into. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because every story in the Bible has a lesson for us. Lord, we want to thank you for the story of the prodigal son. In many ways, we may wander away from your truth or from your word. Just a little prodigal son who had everything, he was living very comfortably at home, but got tired and wanted to move away. Lord, we ask you to help us so that we may not drift away from your word, that we may remain faithful to you. Help us to be patient. 
Help us, dear Lord, to be considerate of other people that are around us. Help us to be able to live with all people in a peaceful way. Lord, we ask you to be with us. We want to thank you and we want to honor your name. For I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.